Hello and welcome to my course on Milwaukee Battery Repair. I've been repairing these for a couple of years and I'm going to show you some of the diagnostic and repair techniques I picked up along the way. So if you have a few faulty batteries or just want the greater knowledge of battery technology, specifically Milwaukee in this case, this course is for you. Episode 4, Installing Good Cells to Restore the Battery Pack to Work in Order. In the last episode you would have seen me removing these cells from this battery pack because they're defective because they're showing no voltage. I have recovered some other cells from an old Black & Decker battery 2 ampere. They're a different brand but they're same milliampere so they should suffice. So I'm going to test these cells that I have recovered from the old Black & Decker pack 3.53 3.55, 3.52 we'll say, 3.53 almost, so very close in voltage to the ones in the existing pack, if you can remember from the last episode they were 3.58, so we shouldn't experience too much cell imbalance, because these are reclaimed cells they have lots of nickel stuck to them. And we may need to scruff up the edges to make them easy to spot weld. And there's a little bit of nickel stuck to the end of that. I need to get that off. So we're going to use a Dremel to clean up the ends here. Also recommend using these and the reason for this it's a bit of extra insulation to protect you because this is the negative side this is the positive side and this whole cell is negative except for this little part here and if a little bit of that insulation breaks down you have a positive and negative very close to each other and you can cause a cross connection and that could be problematic so I'm going to stick these on for extra safety. So to install the cells we'll put this rubber thing between the two cells there. That's a nice thing Milwaukee have in their batteries. It's a bit of extra protection between the two cells. These can be tight to get in but this has went okay. With those pushed in, in the right configuration, we have to join them to the rest of the pack in the right way. And to do this, you use both a spot welder and a soldering iron. You can solder directly onto cells, but I don't recommend it. The heat can damage the cells and it can also cause issues like the battery catching fire. The safer way to do it is the way the manufacturer is doing, spot welding. Right, this here is a spot welder. And it's sort of a DIY one that I cobbled together myself. But there's all sorts of spot welders out there. And what we're going to use to join these batteries, or these cells to the battery, is this nickel strip so I cut butts that off and I spot weld them on and where I need a connection that is not directly on the cell you solder So with that nickel strip attached, we're going to attach it to the original strip with solder. And that's the sort of thing there. And we just need to complete that all over the pack here 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 and here 
There we are, we've spot welded and soldered it all together. And we're going to check the voltage now to see what we've got. So overall voltage of the pack is 17.7, .7, which is a chargeable voltage. So we'll get it together and see if it charges. Here we go. And it's charging. Showing no fault. So we'll leave it to charge a wee while and see what happens. So this battery is charging perfectly. It's up to two bars and it's going to charge fully. There she goes. Four bars. So I'll take this off and put it in the voltmeter. So there you are, 20.44. That's very, very good. That's a fully charged pack and all the cells must be well balanced enough that she took the full charge. So that's it for now. Later episodes will feature circuit board replacement and cell balancing. So tune in for that. See you next time.